What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Tropical Storm Felipe that is continuing to be sheared like a sheep as it continues to move west towards the Lesser Antilles. We have Invest 91L that is not too far behind it, something we'll have to keep an eye on in the days coming up. And now we have something that I've been paying attention to for the last 48 hours or so. We have a huge amount of thunderstorm activity going on in the Caribbean Sea right now. I've been talking with Weather Center Nazario and been looking at some other models and when I talked with it, with Nazario, he was telling me, "Hey Patrick, this could be something that we're develop that's could be developing. We're looking at the wrong storm. We should be paying attention to this one." And I'm inclined to agree with that, and you're about to see why I'm inclined to agree with that. But before we get into that, we're going to go ahead and quickly talk about what we have going on. We have Tropical Storm Felipe as of right now. It is uh, it is a 45 mile per hour tropical storm. It is moving west at 14 miles per hour. The minimum central pressure is up to 1,003 millibars. It's continuing to weaken primarily due to all that shear that's going on. Tropical storm force winds extend out 175 miles from the center. And its current location is 17.3 degrees north or th uh, or 50.3 th uh, degrees west or about 850 miles uh, east of the northern Leeward Islands. And it's continuing to move due west at this current time. Current track has this thing uh, moving kind of west-northwest and then it turns towards the west and then it weakens down to a tropical depression and then an open wave, primarily due to all the wind shear that's going through it. As time continues to go on, we can go ahead and show you the discussion as we look into this, Felipe continues to struggle with strong uh, west southwesterly shear associated with the low to its northwest. This low level center is completely exposed and deep convection remains well removed from the center. Strong shear is not anticipated to let up over the next several days. At this current time, a combination of shear and a dry air environment should lead to a gradual decay and a, a, satellite, a simulated satellite images from the GFS and ECM. WF or European model suggests that Felipe will likely degenerate into a remnant low in three to four days. The NHC int intensity forecast lies near the middle of the guidance envelope and now shows the system becoming a remnant low by day four. So that's what we have going on right now. 45 miles per hour expected for the next 36 hours. Then it's supposed to get down to 40, then 35 in three days, and then becomes a post-tropical cyclone in the next four to five days or so as a 30 mile per hour remnant. So that's something we have to continue to pay attention on as time continues to go on. However, I am also paying attention to a potential a threat to the Antilles, not primarily due to wind, but primarily due to rain. There's a lot of, there could be some flooding that if this thing gets close enough to it as time continues to go on. So that's what we have with Felipe. Next one we're going to go ahead and talk about is 91L. And this has been a pretty interesting situation that has been kind of developing. Here's what we got. Showers and thunderstorms continue to show signs of organization in association with a broad area of low pressure located several hundred miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Environmental conditions are forecasted to be conducive for development, and a tropical depression is expected to form in the next day or two while the system moves west-northwestward across the central tropical Atlantic. 80% chance of formation in the next two days, 90% chance of formation in the next seven days. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a very serious situation that we have to pay attention to. And also this Caribbean wave that hasn't been tagged by the NHC yet. However, based off of some of the models I've seen, I wouldn't be too surprised if that happens sometime soon in the in the near future. And ladies and gentlemen, as we get into this active weather period, be sure to check out my friends at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting catered for your local area. For more information, be sure to find a link to uh, you'll find a link to their website, excuse me, in the description down below, and be sure to use code PREDICTOR for 50% off your first month. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get right into the models as we could as they are presented to us. So here's the European model as of right now. European models have been mainly focusing on Felipe as well as the Invest 91L. Felipe continues to show signs of decay as time continues to go on as the discussion was kind of talking about, but then it pushes further to the west as a high pressure system starts building up and potentially brings some rain to Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, those areas right there. In the meantime, 91L that is expected to become Rena potentially is expected to continue moving further and further to the west and could bring some significant, not, well not exactly significant, but a lot of impact to the Antilles, primarily due to flooding 
and all those areas before our trough starts to pick up and turn this thing more and more to the north as time continues to go on. And then there's a ridge that starts to build back up. And we'll have to see how that goes as time continues to go on. I'm a bit curious with what happens with 91L, primarily due to all the high pressure that's starting to build up in, this, in, the, uh, in the Atlantic Ocean at this point, which will push this further to the west. So... And that's what we have according to the European model at this current time. Next model we're going to go ahead and show you is the GFS. Here's the GFS at this time. GFS has this thing uh, kind of or, uh, kind of just degrading in, in, in development. It still is a, rem a remnant low as time continues to go on, and it impacts Puerto Rico, especially with all that rainfall. Meanwhile, 91L, the GFS is forecasting this to explosively intensify down to a 954 millibar system, 946 by the time it starts turning to the north, which I will say if that does happen, it's going to stay further out to sea compared to where we see with a, uh, the European where it's a weaker system. So that's something we need to pay attention to as time continues to go on. The GFS also has a low pressure system starting to build up in the Gulf of Mexico once again. We'll have to keep a very close eye on it as time continues to progress into October and as we start to see a shift from more of the whole Cape Verde setups to more Caribbean setups as we are seeing right now in the uh, in, right now in off the coast of really in the Western Caribbean Sea. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on that. Next one we're showing you is the CMC model right now. The CMC model has really been interesting. I was talking with Weather Center Nazario and he told me and he also posted on Instagram that the CMC model really earned his trust this uh, with Adalia. So we'll have to first of all pay attention to that and then CMC has Felipe weakening as time continues to progress. And then it has this area of interest right here, organizing and developing and pushing a little further to the west. It's kind of a, doing a middle ground scenario with what's going uh, with uh, between the European as a weaker system and the GFS as a stronger system, which is pretty interesting to say at the very least. And then that, that that's the 0Z, but the 12Z came out. And, that's, and I want to show you this because this is pretty interesting because this may have something to do with what may happen down the road. Here's what we have. With the CMC, they're actually forecasting, I'd say starting in the next f uh, seven days for a, the Central American Gyre, another one rather, to start organizing, move into the Caribbean Sea, start organizing and developing. And by t October 6th, things start to really, get, it gets to, really gets its act together, which if that is true and if that holds, that's going to cause a lot of problems because where it is right now, insanely good conditions for development. So that's what we have with the CMC, and I will have to pay attention to this as time continues to go on. We'll show you some... I actually want to go ahead and show you some of the ensemble runs uh, as of late. We'll show you the GPS ensemble models right here. Here's the ensemble members... Uh, runs as of right now, uh, as of right now, which is pretty interesting to say at the very least. CMC, uh, uh, CMC ensembles have been pretty uh, interesting. They've been having the gyre start to develop uh, later on, uh, later on down the road. That's the G yeah down the road and going through these good conditions of development and potentially uh, bring some situations that we have. If you take a look at the European ensembles. European ensembles are mainly focused on uh, on Felipe and 91L at this time. However, there is some scenarios that are starting to pop up in the Caribbean down the road as we continue to start seeing more of a shift away from you know, uh, from you know uh, the, uh, the excuse me the uh, Cape Verde setups to Caribbean setups like the gyres that we start to see and the GFS ensembles have also been doubling down on it as well to some extent, so we'll have to keep a very close eye on it as time continues to go on. Next thing we're showing you is the Icon model uh, right now. The Icon model has been pretty interesting to say at the very least. Icon model is pretty much in agreement with the European GFS and CMC that this that Felipe is going to push further to the west, bring some impacts to Puerto Rico, Hispaniola. And then, interestingly enough, the Icon kind of does what the CMC is doing with the middle ground scenario where this thing starts strengthening as it approaches the Antilles. And if it does that, this uh, trough right here will likely engage uh, that as time continues to go on. And then there's another high pressure system building up. So we'll have to see how this whole th scenario goes. And if this can stre strengthen enough, it might be enough to push this further and further to the west. We already have a 1023 millibar high pressure system over there, which... That's not a small high pressure system at all or anything like that. That's a pretty strong one. And meanwhile, the remnants of Felipe are affecting Haiti, the Dominican Republic, the Bahamas, Cuba, all those areas right there. That's the icon model right there. Next one, next one we're showing you is the Navgem model as time continues to go on. The Navgem has been pretty interesting. The Navgem is actually 
that's interesting right here. The Nav Gem is actually having Felipe reorganize, re-strengthen up to a hurricane and approach the Antilles, but and then just forecast to stall out and move uh, out to sea. I have not. I that I will be honest with you. I have not seen a scenario like that. I'm not in too inclined to trust that, but if that was to happen, the Antilles would be in a uh, that would be in a bad spot for the Lesser Antilles to get impacted, and primarily due to all the impacts and the fact that this stays there for so long. So that's what we have going on with the Nav Gem right there. I wouldn't be too inclined to trust it at this time, primarily because all the other models are not really doing anything with it. So that's what we have going on with the Nav Gem. Next one we're showing you thing we're showing you is the conditions, global sea temperatures. Across the whole uh, whole nine yards, very 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 warm as time continues to go on, and we got and we take a look at this. Uh, looking at the speaking uh, wise, the European, if that forecast is correct, uh, correct, and this pushes towards the Antilles, still, it's going to be moving over thirty degree warm water, and if it can uh, tap into that OHC. And basically, the wind shear weakens enough. It could uh, be a it could be a potentially serious is issue as time continues to go on. Excuse for excuse me for all the stuttering, and then uh, we and then we have yeah and then we have the gyre over here that is starting to organize and develop. We have this system, this monsoon like system in the Caribbean Sea over here that is starting to organize over thirty plus degrees Celsius warm waters right here, which. That's got uh, that's got to be quite scary. Looking at that, and if we go ahead and take a look at the OHC, that's even scarier where this is at. And a lot of these areas are over 200 plus OHC across the parts of the Caribbean. And where Felipe is right now, it's in an area of like uh, like what uh, 100 OHC. So definitely something to monitor as time continues to go on. Either way, it's still a very interesting scenario. Last thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the wind shear going into this. And the wind shear where Felipe is continues to be quite strong, around 30 to 40 knots for a 45 mile per hour tropical storm. So overall, not the best situation with it. Where 91L is, it's in a pocket of low wind shear. Uh, so that's gonna we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But where this whole Central American system is, it's in an area of like 25 to 30 knots of wind shear. So right now, I wouldn't be too inclined to uh, to be too worried about it at the current time. However. Based off of some of the modeling we have seen and some of the ensemble modeling that we have seen, I wouldn't be surprised if we see an area of interest in that part of the Caribbean in the next few days or so. We'll keep an update for you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel as more information comes in. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. Be sure to check out my friends at Prestige Weather Consulting. You get 50% off your first month using the code PREDICTOR. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.